Welcome to chapter 2 part 3. In this part we're working on materials, adding some colour to our new maze. So if we go back to our material folder, we saw there's Lambert 1 that came with our first mesh. We can open this up and have a look at a material editor. The material editor looks as such. In the centre we have a blueprint and part of that blueprint is this brown node in the middle. This brown node is what is the output of the result of the material. On the left hand side we've got a viewport to see a preview of the material and then below that we have a details panel for the various details we have per the node we click on. So this details panel will change every node we click on. On the right hand side we've got a palette of the various nodes available to us but we can also access this in a similar fashion to how we do normally blueprints by right clicking in empty spaces. So when you open up this Lambert 1 you'll be presented with your result node and a parameter node. This parameter node is a colour that come with the material and if you want you can click on this and then on the details panel we can change the colour of it. So we can click on there and we're going to choose a light brownie colour for our wall. Click OK. When you're done click apply at the top to apply your settings. More on materials later on. We can close this down and you should see that it has updated all the wall meshes with that colour. For organisation sakes we should want to rename our Lambert 1 to something a bit more memorable. So we're going to call this one wall underscore mat for material. And we want that to also be applied to the pillars. So we're going to go into our meshes folder, open up our pillar mesh. In your mesh viewer on the right hand side you'll see material and in there you can choose from the drop down menu your material you just made. I can see wall mat. Click save and you should see a whole level updated with the new material for the pillars. Now I'm also going to make a material for the floor. So I'm going to go back to my material folder and let's create a new material. So go to add new material and we call this one floor underscore mat and open it up. Now this one does not come with a parameter because it's a brand new material. So what we need to do is create a new colour for this. A colour is simply a vector which is three floating points, one for red, one for green and one for blue. If you hold down the three key on your keyboard and left click somewhere it will spawn in a constant three vector. In other words a colour. And we can plug that into our base colour for the floor mat result node. With your three vector selected, down in the details panel we can choose what colour we want to use. And I'm going to choose a sort of darker brown, sort of mud sort of colour. Like so. And I'm going to click apply. I'll now drag this onto the top of my floor. And now I've got a brown colour floor. It's a bit too shiny for my liking. It doesn't look very mud like because it is so shiny. So let's take some of that shine out. Now the correct term for that shine is called specular. And you'll see that as a result node on your floor material output. We're going to set that to zero. By default it's set to 0.5. So we're going to create a, uh, a simple one uh, float uh, constant. So hold down the one key and left click and you'll create this constant one vector. So it's a one value basically, a constant number. And it starts at zero which is fine, that's all we need. And we're going to drag that into specular to turn specular off. And you'll notice the shine will have gone from our design here. We click apply. And the whole floor will update when the shaders are finished compiling. Click play to get a view of the whole entire room. Now currently it says preview in the shadows. That is because that is a preview of the shadows. The preview means that the lighting has not yet been built. 
The way lighting works in games is that sh uh, shadows and lighting is baked onto textures rather than being in real time. This saves on performance. To build your lighting, go to the build menu at the top and choose build lighting only. And this will not only just remove the preview message, but also clear this red warning message saying lighting needs to be rebuilt. Building lighting does take some time, so bear with it whilst it is running through the system. And with that done, you can see lighting has cleared those preview messages. It's not ideal yet. We will get continue to improve lighting as the game goes on. To play, and you can walk around the whole entire world as you see fit. Thanks for watching. That is part three. Join us in part four, we'll be adding further meshes to design our level. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.